total gut. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Dennis at Digun Luye. Plenary sittings were suspended during the past week to allow for the various public hearings in some states on the Constitution review process. In the Northwest Geopolitical Zone, the Senate Committee on Constitution Review appealed to stakeholders to actively participate in the public hearing while sustaining quality contribution for the peace and development of the nation. Chairman of the committee, Senator Kabiu Gaya, spoke to the media in Kaduna shortly before the public hearing which held last Wednesday. The Constitution is the, the, the act for the governors of the country which affects every Nigerian and therefore we need every Nigerian to contribute uh, to the making of the law that will govern him and uh, I believe it is a way that uh, the Nigerians can feel that they are persuaded in this constitutional review. In fulfillment of its mandates of bringing together stakeholders from various walks of life to speak to issues critical for the review of Nigerians' constitution, the Northwest Committee, headed by Senator Kabiriga, convenes this public hearing. You will agree with me that if we get this, those items through the constitutional process of altering successfully, then our constitutional democracy will be set on the right pedestal. The evolution of power among tiers of government, fiscal issues, macroeconomic development, federal structure and gender-related matters are among submissions by participants. We recommend that the issue of new national minimum wage should be under the exclusive legislative list, not under the concurrent legislative list. And then we also advocate for autonomy for local government, autonomy for judiciary and autonomy for uh, legislature. And uh, I pray that my senator will give uh, women the opportunity to one day have a very opportunity. At the inaugural session, the host, Governor Nasr Ahmad Erufai, suggests decentralizing the Nigerian police and the judiciary. I am of the strong conviction that we need to devote powers in our country to the balance of federation for better governance. Stakeholders from four participating states of Kanu, Katsina, Jigawa and Host Kaduna are expected to present concrete implementable contributions for the review of the 1999 constitution. Inadequacy is identified in Nigeria's 1999 constitution as said to be among the major factors slowing down the country's pace of development. This is what the two-day public hearing by the Senate Committee on the 1999 Constitution Review seeks to address by harmonizing stakeholders' contributions to meet contemporary democratic system of government. If good governors are going to elude the masses when government is far away from them, the federal and the states, they are too far away from the grassroots, and local governments are the answer. As a way of restructuring, mine may not really be a true federalism kind of thing. But what I recommend is that with the creation of more states and local governments, with the passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill, with the abrogation of um, open grazing and some of those things, that the zones will be more uh, consolidated and it will enhance service delivery. But when you have more women in parliament, there will be life. You know, a lot of development issues will be given the kind of life that it requires. We have come here to collect your opinions and be rest assured 
we will do a non-partisan report on those opinions. Participants were drawn from Ekiti, Oshun, and the hosts on those states. The Constitution Review under the chairmanship of Senator Betty Apiafi was declared open by the Deputy Governor of River State, Dr. Epalibo Harry Banigo. It provided an opportunity for stakeholders to make their contributions on some challenges, hindering the peaceful coexistence in the country. Submissions from various interest groups such as Nigerian Labour Congress, religious groups and representatives of various states of the South-South presented their position on state police, independence of all tiers of government, labor wages, revenue sharing and electoral reforms, including tenure of political office holders and party defection. So we believe labor issues, especially the minimum wage and other issues of welfare, must retain in the exclusive lead so that workers are protected by the laws. Other submissions we are review on gender parity and opportunity for education to be made free for women and the vulnerable. Today we are here to raise our voices that we are ready. Amendment permitting that the Supreme Court be decentralized, establishment of ecclesiastical courts and court of appeal in each state to reduce the delay of justice. The mission is that the Nigerian constitution should be well amended to accommodate the establishment of Christian judicial system and give us our own ecclesiastical court of justice. The two-day constitution review was applauded as a feat that will enhance development and promote peace in the country. For participants at the 1999 Constitution Review Public Hearing for Abia Animo States held in Owere, it was a loaded two-day event that afforded them the opportunity to make inputs in the effort to address lapses in the nation's constitution. They took time to analyze their concerns, some of which include gender equity, free education and community policing. The Ohanez Ndibo, represented by the President General, Professor Judge Obion, stood out with their submission on the need for equity and fairness, decentralization and devolution of powers. It would require a restructured idea to contain the present forces and tendencies towards a synchronized national crisis. We can have a reversion or compassion of the six geopolitical zones that we have now in Nigeria to six regional governments. Nigerian women, we are ready to work hand in hand with men and we are saying this is the right time to achieve it. The chairman of the session and the Senate chief whip, Senator Ojozo Kal, says the submissions will be converted to the National Assembly for further deliberations. We have collected what we are supposed to collect and we are taking them back home to start work on the amendments. We would have this um, constitution amended for the good of it. It may not be everything that we have asked for. As the Constitution Review Public Hearing convened by the Nigerian Senate is rounded off across the various geopolitical zones, it is the hope of the people that the submissions from the process will yield the desired result. Let's turn our attention away from the constitution review process. Uh, unbundling the Nigerian Postal Service will not only upgrade Nigeria's postal institution to a global player, but will also expand its commercial viability. This is coming from the public hearing on Nigerian Postal Service repeal and reenactment bill convened by the Senate Committee on Communications. As countries around the world are busy reinvigorating their traditional communication systems, 
the Nigerian Senate has embarked on reforming the Nigerian Postal Service. This is coming through a bill that seeks to provide global status for NIPOST by separating service provider from the regulator and the establishment of NIPOST microfinance bank. To cover implementation of a national postal policy encouraging local and foreign investment in the postal industry. The establishment of a regulatory framework for the postal industry which shall be an effective, impartial and independent authority. That is the Nigerian Postal Commission. Nigerian Postal Service to be exclusively in charge of stamp duties. Our observation, Mr. Chairman, is that this will be against the spirit of the Constitution. The bill for the establishment of a nationwide toll-free emergency number for the effective and efficient emergency management system was also thrown up for public inputs. It's equally very important for foreign citizens, the outlet, to freely seek assistance in case of emergency or for the prevention of incidences. Our plan is to have a minimum of one emergency communication center in each state, and that will be in collaboration with other stakeholders that will use it, like police, fire service, and uh, many more. The Deputy President of the Senate, Ovie Omar Gege, who is also Chairman of the Senate Ad Hoc Committee on Constitutional Review, has announced that the committee has received 250 memoranda and will ensure that no personal interest will influence the ongoing alteration process. And the committee have held several consultations and meetings to deliberate on the process and submissions in preparation for the public hearings at both national and zonal levels. Following from the analysis of the memoranda submitted, the issues have increased to 16. Senator Omar Gege announced that the Senate will vote on the constitutional alteration bills before embarking on its 2021 annual recess in July. Now, the past week has been one of great mourning and sober reflection following the tragic demise of the late chief of army staff, Ibrahim Atahiru, and others in an air crash in Kaduna. Senate President Ahmed Lawan expressed deep sadness over the tragedy. In a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Ola Awuni, Senator Lawan says the tragedy is a national disaster of immense proportions that has thrown the entire nation into mourning. He extended his heartfelt condolences to the Chief of Defence Staff and the entire members of the Armed Forces of Nigeria. Senator Lawan observed that the incident is saddening coming at a time where there is fresh momentum in the nation's war against insurgency, banditry and other violent crimes which the officers were committed to. He commiserated with the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Muhammad Buhari, and the families of the deceased and wishes the departed souls eternal peace. And uh, Senator representing Kano North, Barao Jibrin, shares his thoughts on the unfortunate incidents. We're all aware of the uh, sad events that occurred Friday night uh, uh, last week with the sudden demise of the Chief of Army Staff and other top uh, military personnel. Just uh, first and foremost, give us your thoughts about what has happened and what can you say about the late uh, Koas himself? Well, first of all, let me extend my profound condolences to the family of Chief of Army staff. Uh, I pray that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow him to rest in Ajahn of Hidawsi and also extend my profound uh, condolences, uh, as I said earlier, to others who died in that uh, uh, plane crash. Uh, and uh, I pray that uh, may their souls rest in perfect peace. Uh, in particular, there is uh, one of them who comes from my state. I uh, also pray that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow him to rest in a general uh, I wish their family 
um, I want, I pray that may uh, God give them the fortitude, the families of all of them, may God give them the fortitude to bear this big loss. And uh, we are all with them at this difficult time. Um, we pray and uh, by grace of God, uh, they should have the uh, mind and the fortitude to bear this uh, big loss. Uh, the losses they were uh, incurred in respect to uh, the death of uh, the heads of their families. All right, and how would you say that they deserve to be honored, these fallen heroes that have passed away? Well, that has become uh, necessary uh, because these people died in active service. Uh, they died in their quest to make this country safe and to protect uh, the people of, 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 of this country. So they died as heroes and uh, we need to recognize them as such and uh, give them, extend to them all what is uh, attributable to those who died in active service. They are heroes and uh, uh, we regard them, this country will not forget their service to their fatherland, uh, their services to their fatherland, and uh, they remain uh, great patriots of this country and heroes of this country, and uh, they, they are so rest in perfect peace. Amen to that. And um, how do you feel that the families they left behind should be um, catered for, supported as in this uh, very trying time and beyond? Necessary and uh, very much appropriate uh, because they die in active service. So uh, there's that need to make sure that uh, the families are made comfortable uh, because uh, the heads of, these, of their families uh, died for the survival of this country, for the protection, respect of their need to protect this country. And so uh, the government and all our sundry, uh, we should all collectively make sure that uh, the families are uh, put in a situation where they will become most comfortable. The children should be able to attend good schools. They should uh, have that sense of uh, love from all of us. Uh, they should be loved by all of us, and uh, uh, they should be catered for. They should be supported. They should be uh, helped. They should be uh, loved, and uh, all what uh, should go with making sure that families, children, especially kids. I uh, made comfortable those things should be extended to them. Uh, they should be made to understand that uh, their parents died for the uh, sake of this country and they should be assisted and helped in the most appropriate manner. And um, the armed forces uh, generally, not just the, the uh, army, how would you say that their morale can be sustained and boosted, particularly at this difficult time and uh, going forward? Yes, we are with them, we are always with them. Uh, because they put their lives on the line. Uh, they have uh, sworn to help to protect us. Uh, they are our heroes. We should always uh, be with them. Uh, they should understand that uh, we know what they are doing for this country and we regard them as uh, uh, very, very uh, good people, highly respected because of uh, what they are doing for their fatherland. So we are with them. And uh, it is important that all our sundry should uh, take them as such. And uh, uh, it is something that uh, is normal in life. Uh, the military, of course, they are the ones that uh, one always look at when we uh, think of dangers associated with uh, professions. Uh, but other professionals also face the same uh, risks. Uh, you can, even doctors, even journalists, uh, I can remember during uh, when we had Ebola, uh, a very good doctor who died in Lagos, you know, she died in active service while trying to save human beings, uh, working for humanity, and she died while doing that. Not only her, I think another doctor died the same the same manner and I think uh, she is only remembered because I know there's a big street in Abuja that is named after her. Uh, so uh, even you journalists, 
Sometimes you, uh, you get killed in active service, in the front line, when you go to report, tell uh, the people, tell people about what's happening in crisis. And uh, you get sometimes through crossfire or sometimes uh, intentionally, you get uh, killed, the journalists get killed. So every profession, even we politicians, sometimes politicians are assassinated. And uh, so and so forth. So, you can see what is happening in Mali. You know, yeah. an elected government has been overthrown, and uh, uh, well, I wouldn't say it is overthrown, but uh, the president or I think uh, the leaders of that government have been arrested. Uh, why? They are politicians. You know, they contested, contested election and they won election, and have the mandate of their people. But yet they are now uh, being uh, detained, and to take your freedom away from you is something that is serious even for a day, you know, but they have been detained now. So, there are risks in every profession that uh, you can think of, but uh, I want to tell you we respect our, our men and women in uniform. Uh, we, we, we have the highest respect for them because uh, we know the sacrifice they are making to protect us and uh, we, we love them, we hold them dearly and we will continue to give them the support they need at all times. Definitely. And uh, lastly, um, the Senate recently interacted with the uh, late uh, Chief of Army Staff and other military uh, top brass. Um, concerning insecurity, how can we you know, overcome this challenge? What is the Senate doing in, in terms of interventions to help the military to overcome these uh, insecurity challenges? Yeah, the Senate has been doing quite uh, very well uh, in order to uh, see to the end of uh, the situation, this ugly situation we find ourselves. But we believe is a phase in life. Yeah, every country, you know, sometimes passes through this kind of uh, uh, phase. You know, sometimes you experience economic posterity, uh, you, you know, substantial development, and sometimes you face a crisis of this nature. But it is surmountable. It is surmountable, and uh, we are going to surmount it. It's a phase that's going to pass. So uh, for us, we are very, very optimistic that uh, it will be uh, history uh, in a little time to come. And uh, we are working on that. And uh, well, the problem will be, will be surmounted and it will become history. So we believe that we have all it takes to deal with the situation. Some countries have passed through worse situations than ours. Uh, they've come out stronger. Uh, in the 60s, uh, there was a civil war in this country. It ended and the country became more stronger and uh, you had prosperity. Uh, so uh, I don't think Syria is uh, as worse as you know, when we had a civil war. Uh, it will come to pass. Those who think that you know come to pass will be shamed. So I think it's a phase. And we are moving, we are learning every day and we are trying to provide solutions. The Senate is always, uh, we have a hard series of engagements with stakeholders who are uh, in the area of security. We had a security summit. Uh, where is the engagement is continuous. We have several resolutions. So um, we are working. Everybody is working. Uh, everybody is on their toes. So and I believe that these collective efforts uh, being put, these collective efforts being uh, put together, um, the efforts by all the stakeholders, it will bring, uh, by grace of God, within, within no time, it will bring an end to this uh, situation. It's a phase, and it will pass. Amen to that. Thank you very much, distinguished uh, Senator Baraj Thank you. Thank you. Well, that concludes uh, this edition of Senate 109. Many thanks for watching. I'm Dennis at Dignum. Until next time, see you again.